Take a moment to remember who got us and who I am. There you go, lifting my load again. Hi, I'm Pastor David, and welcome to our Take a Moment devotional. A while ago, I was reading something a pastor wrote about the size of the coronavirus. Did you know that the size of the coronavirus that changed our life and much of our world the last few months is what they call a 1.25 nanometer sphere? I didn't even know what a nanometer was before I heard that kind of measurement, but, but I learned that day that it is one billionth of a yardstick. One billionth of a yardstick. I, I mean, that's really small. And that tiny thing changed life as we knew it. It has caused the death of many people around the globe. It has shut down businesses. It's led to an economic downturn, the likes of which we've not seen in most of our lifetimes. It has impacted how you and I live each day. You know, it's interesting to me that for decades, people worried about something huge happening, like like atomic bombs being dropped in a war and all the radioactivity that would result from that and, and how that would totally change life on planet Earth. Yet that titanic threat has never happened. And a tiny object that that looks like a soccer ball with spikes on it has paralyzed the world. As I think about the power of tiny objects, I am reminded of the words of the wise writer of Proverbs who wrote in chapter 30, verses 24 through 28, about ants and rock badgers and locusts and lizards. And, And he's amazed at these small creatures and the power that they have that leads them to be able to do what they do. And speaking about a kind of lizard that lives in that region of the world, the Jiragua Uh, gecko, a a, a lizard so small it can curl up on a dime, a a lizard which is a little longer than half an inch, the writer of Proverbs says in verse 28 this, lizards are easy to catch, but they are found even in king's palaces. In other words, that lizard that seems so powerless can easily get past armed guards, elaborate security, and, and the best impediments that humans can provide. It can even get into a king's palace, King Solomon says here in Proverbs, as one day he must have been watching a little lizard on the wall by his bed and laughed at his own security detail. I mean, security that couldn't even stop a lizard. As I ponder that, I I think about the reality that we have the capacity to stop something like a, a, a nuclear war but we can't stop something that is one billionth of a yardstick from being able to do what it's done. And seeing that reality, some people are saying, well, that's because God has sent this virus on us to punish us for our sin. But but you know, the reality is that Jesus undoes this kind of speculation in John 9, 1 through 3, where, where people ask him whether a man who is born blind had his blindness caused by his own sin or by the sin of someone else, like his parents. And and Jesus says, neither. It happened. It happened, and God will use it for his glory. In other words, Jesus is saying that, that bad things happen because we live in a broken and fallen world. God doesn't cause evil, but he will use evil for his glory. And so the blind man is healed. And so can I say we're on shaky ground if we try to connect a disease to God causing it to happen? But the Bible does teach us that what God did not cause, God can definitely use for his glory. And and several places in the scripture make that clear. And, And we see that today, don't we, in your life and mine, and how God can use a tiny virus for his glory as as what has happened has caused us to stop and to consider our life and what is truly important. Think about it. He has used what he did not cause to confront us with the reality that we are finite beings, to remind us of our mortality by us simply going to the grocery store and hoping that the person next to us doesn't sneeze on us. He's used what he did not cause to humble us as We have certainly been humbled by our mobility being taken away, by our having lost our workspaces, and even by our not having enough toilet tissue. He's used what he did not cause to help us see that we have depended on systems that that ultimately won't save us, that we need something more. We need a relationship with God that we can have through Jesus. And, 
and his free gift of mercy that keeps us from the consequences we deserve and his free gift of grace that is God's gift to us that we do not deserve. God used something he did not cause, something that is one billionth of a yard to do that in our life. Lizards can get into the king's bedroom no matter how strong the guards are, the Bible is saying. And so we need faith. Faith in the promises found in God's word. Faith to trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of our wrongdoing so that we can have life forever with God. And when you hear that, maybe you're saying, but I I struggle with my faith sometimes. Can I say that, that like the virus, it's not about the size of your faith that makes it powerful. Your faith may be the size of a tiny mustard seed, the Bible says, or, or today we could say that our faith may be the size of a virus, just barely able to be measured. But, but when our faith, no matter how large or small it is, is in Jesus, it's, it's not about how much faith we have, but about the one in whom we put our faith. Yes, these are faith-testing days. And our faith may look tiny in the face of the present terror. But faith the size of the virus, leaning on the risen Lord Jesus, can see us through this time. We're having to stay in our homes. But we can triumph over all that is happening because Jesus did not have to stay in his tomb. Tiny lizards can get into palaces and nothing people can do will keep them out. But a tiny faith can triumph in terrible times as it reminds us that that nothing which happens can separate us from our God who loves us and who walks with us each moment of this pandemic and who, when we trust him, will give us his presence and peace. Your love carries, your love carries me through all the valleys and the darkest places.